My hair looks a bit of a mess today, but we're gonna go with it. Hi my friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video was originally going to be all about female or AFAB autistic traits. However, when I was looking into this, I stumbled across a couple of really interesting videos from other autistic YouTubers, and I'm gonna leave them linked down below if you wanna go check them out. They're actually really fascinating. These videos talked about how autism has been gendered within psychology, and how actually we can't put autism into male and female boxes. Firstly, because this excludes gender diverse people, and actually, Gender diverse people are more likely to be autistic than cisgender people. And secondly, because some males may have what's considered to be female autistic traits and some females may have what's considered to be male autistic traits. I personally think that I have both male and female autistic traits. So in order to make this video inclusive to everybody, I'm not gonna be referring to male and female autistic traits because I believe that this is inaccurate. But instead I wanna talk about some of the stereotypical autistic traits and how actually these vary hugely amongst autistic people and therefore they may go unnoticed and someone may go undiagnosed because of this. Autistic people tend to struggle socially and while some autistic people are happy to and prefer to spend time alone, some autistic people actually try to make friends and try to socialise and connect with other people. The autistic person that tries to fit in may always feel like they're different from everybody else, always feel like they just can't quite fit in no matter how hard they try. They may be a little bit shy and they may rely on copying, observing other people's behaviours, expressions and things that they say in order to try and feel like part of a group. Some autistic people have a clearer idea of things that are considered to be socially normal. How certain things should not be said to certain people. And that when someone says some weird expression like grab life by the balls, even if it makes no sense to you whatsoever, like my life doesn't have balls and so how would I grab them? You should just smile and nod. It's important to be aware that just because someone makes eye contact with you doesn't mean that they want to and it doesn't mean that it's comfortable and it doesn't mean that they're not autistic. It doesn't mean that you're not autistic if you are able to make friends or recognize social cues no matter how strange that they might be. It just means that you do them manually in an attempt to get by, whereas a neurotypical person would do them automatically. A lot of autistic people have intense special interests, although it's important to realize that not everybody does. Stereotypically, these interests have tended to be about trains, airplanes, or memorizing facts and figures about certain subjects. But many other autistic people have less stereotypical special interests. These can be things like art, fantasy worlds and characters, TV shows, bands or makeup. They may study these intensely but it may go unnoticed because it's not a stereotypical autistic special interest. My special interests are autism, the TV show Friends, houseplants and more recently whales. Sensory issues are really common in autistic people but this varies a lot from person to person. A lot of autistic people are hypersensitive to certain sounds, smells, tastes, textures, touch, and sight. However, some people can be hyposensitive. Just because one autistic person doesn't like to be hugged, it doesn't mean that the person that does like to be hugged is not autistic. It might just mean that they like the pressure of a hug and they're seeking out that sensation. Many people have sensory issues with food. I don't struggle with this much, but I'm still autistic and have many sensory needs. Some people struggle with food to such an extent that they get misdiagnosed as having an eating disorder. For example, if a person doesn't recognize that they are hungry or thirsty, they may become malnourished or dehydrated or if a person can't recognize when they're full, they may become overweight. Many autistic people are sound sensitive and may have difficulty tolerating certain sounds. However, they may seek out certain sounds, like enjoying listening to loud music. Personally, I love going to music concerts or dancing in a club. It's like my very own stim time and I feel it all over my body. But I go into sensory overload in a cafe or if someone's doing building work nearby. And I have to wear my headphones sometimes when I can't tolerate the sound of the 
appliances buzzing in the kitchen or if I have the TV volume up one notch too loud. This is a big subject and too much to go into in one video, but these are just a few examples of sensory issues and how they vary amongst autistic people and you can't just put autistic people all into one box. It's believed that autistic people struggle with imagination, playing make-believe games or having empathy and that we don't understand or show emotion. Whilst this can be the case for some people, for others it's the opposite as we enjoy make-believe games. We feel emotion strongly and we empathize with others. Next, let's talk about stimming. If you don't know what stimming is, it basically means self-stimulatory behavior in order to self-regulate from over or under stimulation. A stereotypical autistic stim could be rocking back and forth. However, stimming can also be leg bouncing, using fidget toys, skin picking or hair pulling, cracking knuckles, hand flapping, watching moving patterns, hugging or chewing. There are so many different types of stims and one person's stims could be completely different from another person's stims. Some people can't stim in front of other people very easily so just because you don't see them do it openly doesn't mean that they don't do it or that they don't need to do it in order to self-regulate. Speaking of which, I think it's really important to talk about masking. This describes the harmful act of disguising your autistic traits. In order to appear more neurotypical and therefore feel more accepted in society. This can be a huge reason as to why people go misdiagnosed, undiagnosed, diagnosed later in life or even when they reach a crisis point. Someone you know could have spent their whole lives trying their absolute hardest to fit in, observing, copying, acting, tolerating sensations that they just can't tolerate. Basically suppressing all of their needs in life just in order to get by and that is exhausting. Some people mask so effectively that they don't even know who they really are or what their needs are because they've done it for so, so many years. Some people are diagnosed with a whole host of other different disorders before they reach an autism diagnosis, such as anxiety or depression, which is super common amongst autistic people personality disorders, and as I mentioned earlier, eating disorders. So I think I've said enough about this subject today. I feel like there's a whole lot more I could cover. The point is that autistic traits vary hugely amongst people and that we shouldn't keep gendering these traits as being male or female autistic traits. It's old fashioned and it's inaccurate. As you may have heard the expression before, once you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. We're all different, regardless of our gender, or our identity. I hope this video has been somewhat useful to you to talk about these aut autistic traits in a more gender diverse sense. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them, please leave them down below. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content every week. Thanks for watching, bye.